here with my homeboy, Runaway Child, and Flair Trunking with this Flair Trunking experience. So, Sun Trees, what did it take for you to actually start your company? Like, how hard was it? Oh, man, you know, to be honest, when I first, you know, I started out with Prime Incorporated, and my whole thing was safety and learning how to operate a vehicle. I wasn't too, too worried about no money because I knew I had my bills at a, you know, a low rate, you know what I'm saying? So the best thing I was doing, the best thing that, that helped me out was when you go to do a, a purchase, a lease for them, they automatically make you an LLC. Right. And the way they do it is slick. Especially if you don't know what you, you know, getting yourself into. You your own company, that's the only thing you know. But you are a subcontractor up under their company, meaning if you hurt somebody, hurt yourself, or whatever things you do, yeah, that's on you. And you got to pay for your own fuel and everything. But they get benefited off of you. So the, the pay you getting at the time was probably, you know, it was it was good for me because I kept my everything low. Right. But it was killing other people. If they didn't make no money for whatever reason, you know, maintenance, or they didn't run hard, or they, got, they missed a couple of appointments and they had to sit, it hurt them because they live in check to check and they they got all this stuff at the house. Right. But my overhead was so low, I was able to navigate through that. And once I started realizing that, hey man, you a you a LLC, like it's a lot to come with that. Go beyond what our people like to do, which just go by whatever rules are set for them. You set your own rules. Right. You start thinking as a corporation, you start thinking as a carrier, you start thinking about what you want to become and start, you know, going towards that. And that that's kind of what got me to where I am now, with my own authority and uh, own carrier. Right. Let's do a little backstory on, like, how did all this become? Now, I know you personally, but for the viewers, right. what pushed you to this brink? to say, hey, I want to go do trucking. What made you want to get into the to the, the whole arena of trucking? Man, I tell the story all the time. Um, well, you know, we used to work at a plant, you know, a nameless plant, and um, I stayed in that plant for 18 years, and bro, not knowing about and when you say plant, you mean factory, right? Factory, yeah. yeah. Uh, factory company where you work 12 hours or unlimited hours sometimes, 16 hours if you can get away with it. Seven days a week. Seven days a week. And um, holidays and everything. Work? At the time, I thought that's all I can do. I thought that's, all, that's my value. Right. Because before I got that, coming off the streets, a street person just wants a job right he ain't looking for a career or anything like that he just trying to get some money to keep him off the streets right and if he making enough money that he ain't got to do nothing street wise then he doing good for himself but when you have a whole family that's a different play it's different if you by yourself but when you got a family it, it almost pushes you back into the streets you know right. what i'm saying right. but he started working at his factory or whatnot and seven days, 12 hours, sometimes 16 hours. So what brought you to the brink of saying, hey, this is just not enough for me. I need to do something different. Oh man, it was about, I say from the age of 27 to 33, I was still trying to have, I was still trying to be a rap superstar. Right. And it just, it just wasn't panning out because how I was going about it and the resources I had to go about it. Right. It, it just wasn't going to work. So I decided to be a, 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 a machine operator for the plant and just choose that to be my focal point. 
And I achieved it, but it still wasn't gratifying because you're still being backdoored by people that is not a by people that's your color. And not so corporate. Right. And right. being uh, railroaded by people that ain't, ain't your color or or you know what I'm saying, your super your super super superiors or whatever. And um I felt like man, I just said I was like, man, to be honest with you, I was like, man, I'm I ain't care about nothing, bro. I ain't care about having nothing or wanting nothing. As far as talent goes, we was what everybody expired. Around the time, Lil Jon, um, a lot of those Atlanta rappers, Franchise Boys, D4, all of them coming out, we was we was right there with them. But we didn't have no no business mindset right, right. or no business representation. So how did this transition over into... Um, your work life. I know you were saying it caused problems with your work. Well, trying yeah. to balance all that stuff yeah. out. Yeah, because I'm trying to do that, and I ain't paying. And I'm not trying to. I'm tr- my future is that as a, a, a rap star, which ain't gonna pay me nothing. It's a hobby at this point, and then I'm I'm just a temp or I'm just a regular employee at the job, and I ain't trying to aspire to be nothing better. Right. So the arguments that you get into with your significant other just put you in a in a in a depression state where you don't even want to, you know, man, I don't even care. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. You know, I, I didn't care about nothing. I didn't care if she stayed, she left, whatever. And now these people who came in, the last company that bought the comp- that bought our company out, they took us from working any amount of hours you want to three on, four off, 12 hours, 37 and a half this week, 40 hours that week, and nothing more. That right there... I felt like it should have broke me, right? depending on how I was living. But what happened was I did a chapter 13. Best decision I made in my life. Mm-hmm. Even though it's scary what people say about it, it's all depending on where you at and what you can withstand. It it, it organized my situation. Right. When you I, put everything on the it, one it, it consolidated everything. It, it made it easier for me to live. So how long have you been into trucking? I've been in the trucking going on six years. Six years. So, I knew that the plant was going to get shut down. Right. I knew it was going to get shut down. So, I had already, my sons, um, a lot of, one, you know, a lot of people had got laid off from the plant. So, a few of the, those guys got laid off that wasn't making no money at the plant. They started driving trucks. Um, Slimbo was one of them, but I, I didn't talk to him that much. Truck boss. Slimbo, truck, truck boss, boss, yeah. I didn't talk to him that much. Um, but a couple of other guys I did. And if I didn't talk to you, I, I was watching you on Facebook right. sharing your accomplishments. Right. Then my son, as soon as he turned 21 to 2014, he started driving trucks. Right. He said, man, I'm going to go drive trucks. He was already in college. Mm-hmm. He said, man, I'm going to go drive trucks. I'm like, all right, man, you know, go ahead. He was telling me all the good things about it and everything. I said, all right. So he left. He left about four months. I say about the last month and a half, two months, me and him talked daily while he would drive. And uh, I would just ask him questions about trucking. Right. I say, within, that at the end of those four months, he pulled up in the yard in a big old rig, manual. Mm-hmm. Whipping it, and probably had about thirty, forty grand in his pocket. Talking right. about what he finna right. go do. Right. I'm like, hold up, hold up, what? what? Hold up, what? He and said, I'm over here living like that. I said, hold up, what? He said, yeah, man, it's lovely out here, man. You can do this, do that, man. I said, okay, okay. I said, okay. You ain't got no kids. You ain't got no responsibility. So I'm gonna take your forty and cut in half to twenty. If I go out there, right. I just need the support system. You know, my wife and my daughter right. to hold it down while I do this. Uh-huh. I started making goals, planning out stuff. Mm-hmm. And as I started making goals, Put some schedules in your life. I'm looking like I'm looking at short term and long term goals. And I'm like, OK. But the one thing I didn't want to touch at the time was my wife. I'm like, I don't know how she going to do this, how she going to take that. Because another idea I was going to have is when the plant shut down, I was going to go to Kentucky Oklahoma City, yeah, and work at another plant. And they was going to give you 20 grand per 
her family to go. Right. So I was looking at that, and I'm like, oh, that'll be easy. And she had the mindset, well, you go. Yeah. I'm, I ain't going. I ain't going. So that's what made me say, well, I, I don't know if I'm going to tell about this trucking thing. So once we, once our son started driving, and I knew then I can do it because he was mm -hmm. doing it. And he was showing me and telling me all the ropes. And she was okay with how he was doing it. Right. I said, well, she, she should be okay with it, you know, if I get out there. Right. So I mentioned it to her probably at the end, right before they let us go. And she was like, I already know. I done heard it from everybody else. I'm like, well, you know. <laughs> you had to do what you had to do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to be no big thing, a big argument or nothing. But Okay, so now you in the truck. Yeah. Your first experience. I'm what in was the that truck. Like? Man, were you scared? Man, I was were I you? was nervous, but I was. You was adamant. Yeah, I was. I, I was determined work. to make it work. Yeah. Mm -hmm.